Mumbai, which is also known as the financial capital of India, where time is in short supply and the deals never stop. Blink and you may miss an opportunity to make money. Agar aisa hai, then why am I chilling under this banyan tree? Well, India ne recently 75 years of independence celebrate kiya. Or agar hum 75 years se bhi zada piche jaye, then we have found a bunch of brokers trading stocks right under this very tree. Kuch saalon baad ye group bana the Native Shares and Stock Brokers Association, jo independence ke baad bana the Bombay Stock Exchange, where you invest money in an attempt to gain return. In this episode, we will unravel the history of investments, which is full of highs and lows, risks and rewards. It's a journey that will take us from ancient Babylon to 17th century Europe and then to 21st century India. Humans love their wealth. It's why emperors expanded their kingdoms, why merchants expanded their trade, and why we all go to work. India's per capita income has increased by 500 times since its independence 75 years ago. In 1950, it used to be 265 rupees, and in FY21, it's increased to over 1 lakh 25 thousand. But earning an income and wealth creation is not exactly the same. To create wealth, you need to invest your money to make it work. And I have just the right people to tell us the various avenues of investment available to us. So there are basically two main avenues to investment. One is financial investments and non-financial investments or non-financial instruments. So non-financial instruments are uh, things like gold, real estate, and financial instruments are stocks, mutual funds. Those are the sort of the two major categories. Very few people were aware of a financial banking system around independence. Uh, so there's been a huge change uh, in the sense of willingness to invest in financial instruments. To explore more about the history of finance, हम आ चुके हैं the Asiatic Society. ये मुंबई की सबसे पुरानी और famous libraries में से एक है. The search for the earliest rules governing finance takes us back to 1700 BC. This was the time when the early Magadh Empire was being established in India. Right about at the same time, back in Babylon, a king called Hammurabi was penning the Hammurabi Code. These were laws which were written on a stone pillar, and that pillar today is kept at Paris's Louvre Museum. Hammurabi was the king of Babylon around 1700 BCE. According to historians, he expanded his kingdom in an area called the Fertile Crescent, which is present day Iraq. Mein hai. But why is the code of Hammurabi relevant to our present? This code ke ek law ne Babylon mein loans per interest rate fix kiya, which according to some experts is the modern day equivalent of 20 percent. Experts believe that this may be the first known instance of a state fixing the interest rate on loans. The code also specified that lenders would be punished if they charged a higher interest rate on loans. Such rules are the building blocks of modern finance. Even though it's over 3,500 years old, the Code of Hammurabi shaped how kingdoms were governed, including matters related to finance and investments. But to understand the beginnings of modern investment, we need to head back to 14th century Europe, where merchant banks and mercantile banks were being set up. As their name suggests, these banks funded international trade. and it's international trade which led the europeans to discover sea routes to distant lands such as the americas and asia such ventures entailed a higher risk and with higher risks came richer rewards in the 16th and 17th centuries around the time of emperor akbar's reign in india a few europeans started setting up joint stock companies in europe 
a joint stock company is one where an individual doesn't own the business or the company but a group of individuals own stock in the company 1602 mein the dutch east india company amsterdam mein establish hui after a few years the amsterdam stock exchange was set up where the dutch east india company stock started getting traded this is among the earliest examples of a stock exchange by the way joint stock companies ka most famous example hai east india company formed in 1600 by a group of 20 25 people east india company colonized other countries in the world on the other side of the atlantic stock exchanges didn't gain popularity until the late 1700s in 1792 some merchants met under a buttonwood tree in new york to sign an agreement and create the new york stock exchange it's the largest stock exchange in the world with an equity market capitalization of around 25 trillion us dollars lagta hai 18th or 19th century ke brokers ko ped bahut pasand the I made a popular shopping compound in Lower Parel. Today this is Mumbai's commercial heartland with swanky offices, malls and restaurants. However, back in the 1850s, this place was humming with textile mills. And I'm going to meet a senior journalist to tell me about this fascinating piece of history. When US Civil War was happening, there was a blockade and that cotton which was going from US to britain stopped and it uh, triggered a cotton boom in bombay these cotton mills they formed uh, joint stock companies and they were looking to raise money and uh, they were able to raise money from the local investors who later on became brokers and that's how the bombay stock exchange came into being guess where i am right now it's the bombay stock exchange clearly we've come a long way from exchanging stocks under a tree to the modern day electronic trading system we are used to we're going to explore the evolution of investments in india next money makes the world go round today millions of people invest their savings in the stock markets with the hopes to create returns the stock trading in india started with the bsc it wasn't the only stock exchange in operation 1990s तक इंडिया में बहुत सारे रीजनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस ऑपरेट कर रहे थे दिस मेड सेंस क्योंकि पहले स्टॉक ट्रेडिंग पेपर पे होता था द स्मॉलर एक्सचेंजेस सर्व रीजनल कंपनीज एंड इन्वेस्टर्स टू गेट अ टेस्ट ऑफ हाउ द स्टॉक मार्केट्स वर्क बैक देन आई एम एट आई आई डी बॉम्बे I wanted to learn how trading was done before digitization. So I am going to participate in one such session with the students here at the School of Management IIT Bombay. Here I am part of a team of traders that will try to buy and sell shares of various companies that four brokers on the trading floor are going to sell in a limited time just like the old trading floors at the stock exchanges. Oh man that was pretty harsh I'm so glad that we have electronic trading today Indian government ne 1990s mein National Stock Exchange yani NSE ko launch kiya aur sath hi introduce kari electronic trading Dekhte hi dekhte India ke kafi sare regional stock exchanges band hote gaye और आज आप और मैं किसी भी कंपनी के शेयर को या तो एन या बी से खरीदते हैं लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू द फॉर्मर एम डी एंड सीईओ ऑफ द बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज हु विल टेल अस मोर अबाउट दिस Sensex is the known as the barometer of Indian capital market. It had a base of 1978, 78, 79, was 100. And today you know the BSE Sensex value is 58,800. Nifty, which started 10 years later, and uh, it started with a valuation of 1,000 base value when it started, and it is now 17,500. So this is how the markets have grown. We have had ups and downs, which actually shook up the entire industry. Basically, SEBI, which came into existence since 1992, their uh, mandate was investor protection, 
regulation of market participants including stock exchanges and corporates now all this sebi could do well because sebi got autonomous power we can say that indian capital market is the most one of the most regulated nicely regulated while securities and exchange board of india or sebi brought in robust regulation finance and investment companies wanted to simplify decision making as well as reduce risk for retail investors and so they introduced a lot of new investment instruments while instruments like mutual funds were already around they became very popular after the private players entered the market but what are mutual funds let's explore more about this i'm going to meet an expert who has been a business journalist for 30 years and is now an author and professor you have to think of it as where different investors who don't know each other have pooled their money together so that little money becomes a big bond of money and then uh, it goes to invest in different what are called asset classes which means it's nothing but that money goes to buy bonds government or corporate or stocks or gold or real estate or combinations of these 1991 is also landmark uh, sort of movement in indian uh, economic history because before that we were more towards uh, government control of economic resources and economic processes but after that we became uh, uh, much more open to sort of letting private players play out freely so around 93 is when private players were allowed to run their funds and as you can imagine they were very keen on getting new investors right more funds to invest in and they compete by providing returns to customers and the more returns they provide the more customers they get and that led to a much faster growth of uh, investment in uh, financial vehicles so we've seen the assets under management which means all of the money that they manage has grown from uh, you know at the moment it's some 37 trillion rupees that's 37 with 12 zeros behind it and this number used to be you know a 10th of it 10 years ago and a 10th of that 10 years before that so i will actually say that not only has the industry done extremely well we've had excellent funds uh, private sector funds and public sector funds we've done very well for the indian market and we've had a very active regulator who's gone on raising the bar for the industry the new millennium was upon us just a few years after the private sector entered the mutual fund industry the following two decades in india saw the it as well as the telecom boom suddenly the indian market was flooded with smartphones and internet penetration how did the financial services companies react to this let's learn about it next First came smartphones, then came faster internet. Or jald hi digital technologies ne hamari puri society ko kafi had tak badal diya. Soon finance and investment companies jumped on the digital bandwagon and started disrupting traditional patterns of investment. Uh, mutual fund investors are growing. If you look at the folios, there are about 13 crore folios. And out of that, 10 crore folios are of uh, retail investors. Initially, there were just two types of mutual funds, equity and debt. But eventually, a lot of private mutual fund companies introduced variety. To understand how one such company innovated, we're headed to the office of Mire Asset Investment Managers Private Limited. The group specializes in mutual fund investments and has a long track record. They entered the Indian market in 2008 right in the middle of one of the worst financial crises of the 21st century. 15 years later, they have a proven track record and have launched funds that have attracted a generation of investors. Pre-2008, look at the country itself, you know, we were what, one trillion as an economy, our per capita was not even a thousand dollars, and then the industry was around four, four trillion or four lakh crores as we speak. In 2008, we just began our India business when global financial crisis hit the world economy. 
and had an impact on our group's uh, business plan. Our journey in India has been quite similar to the Korea. In 1997, uh, Korea was economically hit hard during the Asian uh, financial crisis and lots of investors lost their savings. That happened right at the beginning of the group's inception. However, our founder, uh, Mr. Hyunju Park, had faith in the group's vision to introduce the concept of a mutual fund by pooling retail assets and investing in capital markets. In our experience, Korean investors turned to capital market and mutual fund investment largely when the interest rate moderated in the country and inflationary pressures is. Between 2001 and 2004, uh, interest rate came down by 175 basis point. During the same time, we saw mutual fund AVM rise. If you look here in India, India remained a relatively high interest rate economy till about 2016. Then between 2016 and 2019, interest rate came down by 300 basis points. Also in 2016, about two major things happened. There was an um, internet revolution and then uh, uh, demonetization happened. This resulted in uh, easy access and digitalization of uh, financial savings. Our uh, products play out over a period of time. So we continue doing our job while the environment changed. The awareness of the product or the need for the product started increasing and hence it led to where we are today. The increase in smartphone has just broken the geographical barriers. Just for data, you know, we sit in 170 cities through our distributor and our branch network as an industry. But the, through the smartphone, we are connected across the country. Earlier, we would get money from, say, the metros. But today, say, beyond Guwahati, say, Tinsukhya, to Salem, uh, to Srinagar in the top, to, say, Baruch, uh, everybody has a smartphone and money comes in from across the country. The entry of private players with global experience meant that retail investors could now pick from innovative investment instruments. One such option is the ETF or exchange traded funds. When you invest in an ETF, you're essentially investing in a basket of stocks that are representative of an index, which could be the Sensex or the Nifty. The exchange traded funds are type of mutual funds which are available to be traded on the stock exchange. Uh, it is real-time mutual fund, like you buy a stock, you can buy them. The good part of exchange traded funds or any type of index funds is that, you know, when, when there is a particular investment universe, you can create an index on it. And if you can create an index on it, you can create a fund. Hello. Yeah, that seems interesting. ETFs seem like a great solution for someone who's clueless about the markets. But there is another problem. People forget to invest. And there's a solution for that too. Systematic Investment Plans or SIPs. One of the biggest innovations that have happened is through the Systematic Investment Plan, which we call SIP. Just before COVID, our monthly inflow would be around eight and a half thousand crores per month. Today, it is twelve and a half thousand crores per month. The fact that you can invest small sums and aim to achieve financial freedom, that I thought was the most significant uh, innovation that the industry got. But no matter what mode you use to invest, consistency pays off in the long term. Consistently investing leads to compounding of your investments in wealth. But what is compounding? Kya hai? Let's take an example of two people, Priya and Akshay. Priya invested 10,000 rupees per month starting at the age of 26. That is 1,20,000 rupees per annum. By the time she is 35, she has invested 12 lakh rupees. Now, Priya, ko dekkar, Akshay also starts investing 10,000 rupees per month at 34. Yani, 1,20,000 per annum. And he continues till the age of 60. So at the age of 60, Priya has invested 12 lakh rupees and Akshay has invested 32 lakh 40 thousand rupees as the principal investment amount at an assumed rate of return of 
Now let's see where they stand. Akshay's wealth at the age of 60 is 1.64 crores including the returns. Whereas Priya's total wealth with returns stands at 2.23 crore rupees. Wow, so basically a lower principal invested for a longer time compounds and delivers much higher returns. Money can't buy happiness, and perhaps that's true. But as I explored the history of investments, discovered stories of ancient kings and brokers who hustled during tough times, and companies that are tapping into technology, I believe that wealth creation goes beyond happiness. It's about creating value for yourself and the people around you. It's a path to a more secure future. And that journey begins with one simple rule. Put your money to work. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk. Read all schemes related documents carefully.